Jessica, will you tell your story to Miss Lawrence just as you told it to Detective Flint? Well, it... It, it all began in, in Mother's showroom. About three months ago, I, I had gone there to buy some school clothes, and one of the girls was showing me some dresses, but not the kind I wanted. She said my mother wouldn't like it. The ones I wanted were definitely not meant for a church social. We were arguing about it when Toby walked in. A at first, I didn't see him. But Toby never was a man to be ignored. I knew, of course, that he belonged to Mother, but that's probably why I decided to go after him. He wasn't hard to get. I didn't know then that Mother was fed up with him. And we started seeing each other constantly. Toby would pick me up after classes, and we did everything together. Sometimes we just went driving. Or horseback riding, or took in the clubs. Mother and I had some buttes over Toby. She kept saying it wasn't because she wanted him, but because he was no good for me. He had a crummy reputation, just a bum whose father happened to leave him $20 million. That he was too old for me, kitchen sink routine. I told her the only reason she was sore was because she couldn't hold on to him, and I could. The night it happened, Toby brought me home sometime after two. We were both tight. Toby was really sound. in the desert are marvelous. <laughs> I told you I couldn't stand this rotten drum, could you? That's right, hit him! That's all you ever do, you and your sinking temper! That's the old firewall, the more! Go, go, go! Jesse, baby, I... I didn't mean it. Didn't mean it? Didn't mean it! You never mean it! Well, this time, Mother, I'm leaving! And I'm never coming back! Come on, let's get out of here, Tony. Jessica. Jessica, I didn't mean it. Please, Jessica, you come back. Better, hey, boy, remember the buttes we used to have? Oh, Toby, Toby. just run, Toby. Quiet, just... Ah! Don't, don't, just... Ah! 
Saying, Jessica, please. Yes, yes, I can hear you, Mother. Oh, God. What have I done? What? Have you I... haven't done anything, Jessica, please, baby. You haven't done anything, nothing. Do you understand? It was an accident. Yes, yes, an accident. But nobody will believe us. And if I believe us, we'll have to think of something else. Self-defense. That's what it was. And I did it. I came into the apartment. Toby was fighting. Mother, it wasn't like that. Jessica, baby, do you want us both to go to jail? Well, no, but... Then do as I tell you. When the police come here, we'll both say it was self-defense. Toby was... was fighting you. Was, was trying to attack you. Please, Mother, no more lies! Please, you I want you to do I... it! Oh, so <laughs> You tell them exactly what I told you to tell them. <laughs> Jessica, do you understand? Do you understand, Jessica? Yes! Yes! <laughs> Jessica. I wasn't able to think until after it was done. I'm so scared. By the time I wasn't, it was too late. I was trapped with it. Chicky. Chicky, it's all my fault. It's not your fault either, Mother. Poor Mother. Always trying to protect me from the cold, cold truth. And it can't be done, can it, Mother? Especially not with lies. Adam. Take the kid over to the DA's office and have her arraigned. Tell them that we're satisfied here that the killing was accidental. With a recommendation like that coming from a hard-nosed old character like you, she probably won't even have to stand trial. You got any objections to saving the taxpayers' money? No, Lieutenant. Not a one. how many different kinds of people there are to fall into them. There are eight million stories in the naked city. This has been one of them. Here's your chance. A dentist is accused of poisoning his wife. It's an overdose of deceit on Superior Court, Tuesday afternoon at 4. Now, laugh along with the Laurel and Hardy Show right here on Channel 2.
This has been a Screen Gems film presentation from Columbia Pictures, produced by Herbert B. Leonard.